Hey everybody. I'm going to be going over how to use virtual memory cards on OpenPS 2 Loader 0 0.8. Um, this, video, this video is actually um, being created for a user named Haldry, um, but I'm going to give a pretty in-depth tutorial, or at least everything you need to know to get started using virtual memory cards. Um, the benefit of virtual memory card is you can save room on your memory card for other things you might need, additional applications, and, you know, just whatever you might need. Uh, my memory card started filling up a little bit faster than I would have liked with save files on there, since I didn't have an extra memory card. Um, and if you're watching this video, and you know what I'm talking about, you have FreeMC boot copied to your... Uh, one of your memory cards at least. Um, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, then this video really won't apply to you. Uh, you need to mod your soft mod your PS2. Um, there are a few methods of doing this. Uh, there are lots of tutorials on YouTube. I used one myself, and I learned how to do it pretty well. I did it for a friend the other day. Um, so you're going to need two things. You're going to need a PlayStation 2 that has free MC boot. Well, actually three things. A PlayStation 2, free MC boot memory card, and open PS2 loader version 0 0.8. I wasn't quite sure about this a second ago, but I read online. I looked at the 0 0.7 user guide, and um, they actually added virtual memory card support in version 0 0.8. So, Haldry, um, your comment earlier about uh, how you weren't sure if uh, OpenPS2 Loader would support it without having to modify the game very well may have been true for version 0 0.7 because virtual memory cards weren't natively supported in 0 0.7 or supported at all to my knowledge and if they were somehow doable I'm guessing it was probably a lengthy in-depth process so um, with 0.8 it's quite simple uh, if you're using a USB hard drive flash drive etc you have your directories set up so at the root of your flash drive you have a folder called ISO I believe or DVD something to that effect in that root directory in the root directory of your USB flash drive you need to create a folder in all capitals named VMC and that's all you have to do on the PC side if you're using network streaming inside your shared folder where you have um, the same folder called DVD or whatever ISO I, I forget um, you also need to create the same folder uh, if you're using a hard drive then you should have already created a partition for OPL called OPL in your hard drive and inside there you want to create a folder also called VMC all in caps uh, I do believe it is case sensitive once you've done that um, assuming you already have OpenPS2 Loader 0.8 on your PlayStation 2 you just need to launch it. Um, if anybody installed the newbie package within the past four months or so OpenPS2 Loader was included in that. Um, prior to that you would have gotten HD Loader and you'll need to get OpenPS2 Loader on the net um, and I'll include a link to OpenPS2 Loader in the description. So without further ado, I'm going to scroll down to open PS2 loader point 8 or whatever you have it named and launch it using the X button. In my case, I'll be going over uh, specifically the hard drive tutorial, although the steps that you take, the steps that you see me take, should be identical, except for one caveat, is that since I've already set up virtual memory card for every game that I have in this list for slot one, I'm going to set it up for slot two because otherwise I'd have to go and erase the settings. Um, and I'd rather not confuse you guys. If you're watching this, seeing me erase settings, you might, you might, you know, it's not, it's not going to quite line up. So when you see me setting up my virtual memory card for slot two, pretend that is your slot one and that should that should be just perfect all right so if you if you have a list of games like this you're going to need to uh, do a little bit of tinkering uh, for each one to get it to work um, 
so the first thing that you want to do is pick whichever game you'd like to do first and press triangle for game settings. Now here you'll see all sorts of compatibility modes. These are essentially little bug fixes. When you load PS2 ISOs, sometimes it doesn't work perfectly and these modes disable certain things or, you know, it, it actually says in the bottom right what each of these modes does uh, to try and smooth the emulation process and make it perfect as if you were natively loading the game off the disk with a totally unmodded PS2. So this one, you know, load alternate core, alternative data read method, etc, etc. Um, DMA mode, I have no clue what that does. Anyway, all you should be concerned about is VMC slot 1. Once again, I'm going to be doing this for VMC slot 2 but just pretend that my VMC slot 2 is your VMC slot 1 and follow my steps exactly. All right, so you should see, uh, you know, two caret brackets and in between not set. So you want to highlight not set and press the X button. And this is a little bit confusing here. The way they uh, color code what you have selected is actually white. Even though all of the rest of the text aside from the word create is white, what I have selected right now is actually SLUS underscore 206.75 underscore 1, not create. Intuitively, you would think that the thing that is highlighted would be a different color than the rest of the text, but they didn't do that. Anyway, naming a virtual memory card SLUS 206 blah blah blah, it's a little bit hard to remember because for every other virtual memory card, you're going to need to name it the exact same thing if you want them all to save to one virtual memory card. So what I did for the first slot was I just named it 001. Easy to remember, short, and it's got a, you know, a lot of variety. So if I ever need to make 002 through 999, I have that much headroom. Not that that should ever happen, but you know, it's always good to have options. So press the X button without moving your cursor or anything, because if you move it down once, thinking that you're now selecting SLUS and hit X again, you will create a virtual memory card file that's eight megabytes and if you're like me and you're kind of obsessive compulsive about having extra data on your hard drive that's doing nothing then it's a pain um so yeah it should be highlighted in white press x and it'll bring up this virtual keyboard go ahead and you know backspace all of it and name it what you want i'm going to name this 002 because this is slot 2 if i were you i'd name it 001 or 000 and then you want to press start so now you've designated what the name of this virtual memory card file will be. Press down on the D-pad and press X to create. Status, VMC file created. Progress 100%. Hit X again to confirm. It'll bring you back to this screen and now you notice that where it used to say not set, it now says 002. That is the virtual memory card file that is designated for this particular game. Last thing you want to do Press down on the D-pad twice to go down to save changes, and press X. It'll save it. Press circle to go back. And now, um, you want to set up the rest of your games using the same virtual memory card. Once you run out of space on that virtual memory card, you could go in. For example, let's say I ran out of space on my virtual memory card uh, before I started saving a game for Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance 2. All you would need to do is go back to that same virtual memory card you just created and name it, say, 003, and just create a new one. Now, I'm not actually going to do it, but that's what you'd want to do. And then you could just save, you know, set up, set up all of your games after that to save to virtual memory card 3. Um... It does give you the option of setting the amount of space or capacity of the virtual memory card. I'm not exactly sure offhand how to toggle the size. It goes up to 64 megabytes. The reason that I don't use anything higher than 8 is because I've read that not all games will support higher than 8 megabytes. Anyway. So now I'll go to Burnout. And I'll set it up for that one just so you guys can sort of see the pattern and understand exactly what it is you'll need to do for each game. So press triangle again, and you'll scroll down. Once again, this will be VMC slot one for you. It'll say not set. Press X to enter. And the name will once again be the the um, 
the code or whatever represents the game. Um, so press X again and type in the name of your virtual memory card that you just created for your first game that you set it up for and press start. Now the status says VMC file exists rather than VMC file needs to be created or whatever it said before. And this text says modify rather than create. So you don't need to create a new virtual memory card file. I made the mistake when I first did it of creating a virtual memory card file for each game and I, my PS2 kept locking up because the partition in my hard drive for virtual memory cards was not big enough to hold all of it. And it's just a mess. You don't want to make more virtual memory cards than you even need. And you don't want to name them things that are sort of hard to remember or only specific to one particular game. So that's why I six the numbers. Press X, scroll down to save changes. And once again, press circle to go back. Now when you launch the game, it will be selecting the virtual memory card file that is either on your USB hard drive or in the shared folder on your computer or in the OPL partition in your hard drive. So from here, once you have them all set up, anytime you save on any of your games in slot one, if you have it set up, it won't be saving to your memory card, it'll be saving another place. If you ever care to, to back up your saves or copy them over to your memory card, there are ways to do that in ULaunch Elf. Actually, navigating in ULaunch Elf, this will really only work with the USB hard drive and the, the internal HDD. You can navigate to your VMC folder, press the R1 button, and mount virtual memory card and actually open it and copy paste the folders. However, when I've done this, I actually ran into some data corruption and ended up losing a lot of my saves. So I don't recommend it. Um, but yeah, if you have OPL version 0.7, I strongly recommend that you upgrade to 0.8. It adds support for ISO files. It adds virtual memory card. And this is a personal opinion, but I kind of prefer the color scheme of it a little bit better. And I think it might have a little bit better compatibility list as well. Anyway, that should cover everything you need to know to get started using virtual memory cards. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments below or send me a message, anything you'd like, and I should be able to help you guys get everything squared away. Um, Haldry, I hope this explains everything to you in the fullest. Um, and yeah, enjoy guys.